Blair of the Mounties, a story of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. We present episode 18 in Blair of the Mounties, being the second and concluding part of Kittilat Lagoon. Our story finds Inspector Blair and Sergeant Marshall on the west coast of Vancouver Island engaged in the investigation of dope smuggling. Posing as tourists, Blair, Marshall and the very efficient Miss Guest of the Special Service are staying at the little hotel at Kittilat Harbour. Our story opens out on the lagoon where Blair and Marshall are enjoying a morning's quiet fishing. Chad, I, I thought I had that one. Gee, he was a beauty, too. <laughs> Always keep your line taut until the fish is landed, Marshal. <laughs> What's that, another piece of philosophy, sir? Well, yes, come to think of it, the same thing applies to catching criminals. Very like fishing. Needs a lot of patience. Well, let's lay off a bit and go over this case. You know, of all the jobs I was ever in on with, uh, with you, this is the most intangible I ever remember. I don't see anything in it. And yet you'll admit there's something wrong here. Well, yes. Probably bootlegging. Maybe. But I think it's something more than that. But just consider this place. Why, it's only a few hours from Victoria. And yet it's pretty isolated. Only one boat a week. And then consider its geographical position. You mean close to the track of ships from the Orient? Yes, that's it. And yet they'd have to divert their course to get near this harbor. That would mean that the ship's owners were on the dope smuggling game. No, I don't think that's the case. The stuff is usually smuggled by men in the crew. Well... They couldn't smuggle a very big quantity in that case. Not of opium, no. But now that cocaine is running heavily, it's different. It's highly concentrated. A couple of hundred thousand dollars worth can be dropped overboard in waterproof packages, fastened to a boy. A motorboat can run out from a place like this and get it without much trouble. Yes, I see. Do you really think this is the headquarters this man Parker is using? I have an idea. It is, Marshal. I didn't expect to stumble on the thing so soon. But I believe we're going to run into something big here. And you better give me the lineup. Yes, that's what I began to do just now. First, there's this man, Parker. We were tipped off that he's the man behind the dope racket. He's running this Fortuna Mining Company in Vancouver. I've watched him for three months. And got nothing on him except that he uses a seaplane. And his movements have been hard to follow. Ah, you think this mining business is a blind? I don't know yet. There are some very respectable people interested in the venture. He might have a genuine business and still use it as a screen for criminal activities. People who invest money don't often worry how profits are made. Yes, I get the idea. But how about this old uh, Commander Richford? There's another phase of the thing. The old chap's eccentric, has this big house and estate up here, and keeps everybody off his property. Miss Guest's theory is that he's a tool of Parker's. She thinks Parker may be using the house as a headquarters. I will say that Miss Guest seems to know her stuff. You know, she's as sharp as a needle. That's right. First time I ever worked with a woman in the detective business, but she knows the dope racket inside out. Anyway, this thing is beginning to fit together. It might be what we're after, Marshal. Yes, it could be all right. Of course it could. This place is ideal. Hardly any people up here except a few Indians. They could pick up that stuff at sea by night and run it in here. Then the seaplanes could run it from here inland. It's only an hour's flying time to the U.S. border. The thing's plausible, all right. The suspicious way these people act at the hotel certainly looks bad. And then that girl yesterday, the commander's daughter, she was frightened to death when asked about fishing on her father's place. We'll have to find some way of looking around that house, Marshal. Yes. Maybe Miss Guest will have an idea. Here she comes, back from her morning call. Oh, yes. But well, she certainly had her nerve calling at that place this morning after the broad hint she got to keep away. She has the nerve, all right. After all, they couldn't chase her off with a shotgun exactly. No. Well, here she comes. Yeah. Hello. Any luck? Not bad. What about you? Oh, I had quite a successful morning. Rather funny. Miss Richford was quite cordial with me. I saw her father, too. Here, wait a minute, Miss Guest. You mean you got into that house? Of course. Had a long talk with the girl. She was very apologetic for her discourtesy yesterday and seemed very anxious to make amends. Mm. And I got a warm invitation for you both to go and fish in the stream near the house. Miss Richford said the evening is the best time, just before sunset. Well, I'll be jiggered. That's fine. We'll be able to have a look round. See anything suspicious, Miss Guest? Just a couple of things, but they're very important. What are they? I told you that I saw the girl's father, Commander Richford. Yes. He came in suddenly as we were talking. Of course, she introduced me. What's he like? He's an invalid, she said. I wouldn't call him an invalid, and yet, in a way, it's true. Just what do you mean? I mean that he's in perfectly good health, except he's an addict. Good 
Lord, you mean he's a drug yes, addict? he has all the indications. By Joe, that's mm. something. What was the other thing? That was queer still in a way. Somebody must have come over from Vancouver by plane during the night. What? How on earth do you figure that? Well, there was a newspaper in the house, the Vancouver province, yesterday's date. It's an afternoon paper, and there's been no boat since yesterday morning. Now, that's what I call observation. Oh, Miss Guest never misses those sort of things. Oh, but that was simple. What's the plan, Inspector? Let's talk it over. I wonder why they turned so friendly over there at the house. Any theory, Marshal? Well, no, I'd rather not do any guessing. Unless it was that the old man was afraid the girl's conduct yesterday might have caused suspicion. That might be. What do you think, Miss Guest? Well, there's that point of the Vancouver newspaper. If anyone came here by plane last night, it may be that they removed any evidence that might have been there yesterday, and now there's no need for keeping us away. You mean they might have taken a load out last night? Yes. That sounds more like it. Then again, it may be a neat little trap. That sounds still more likely. Even so, we've got to go through with it now. They may have a surprise all ready for us tonight. I suppose the Dominion of Canada can afford to lose a couple of policemen. What do you say, Marshal? Fair enough, Inspector. Do you think they're onto our business? Oh, really? To tell you the truth, this thing is developing faster than I expected. I was quite prepared to put in weeks of observation work before we really got anything. And, of course, the whole thing may turn out to be a fizzle. Of course, we really haven't got anything definite at all yet. Only a series of very strange coincidences that take a lot of explaining. We've got to break into this thing and test out these theories. We might stay here a month and never get any farther ahead by just watching the place. Couldn't you put in a report and wait for orders? Yeah, that'd be all right. But I'm a little afraid we've aroused suspicion here already. And in that case, there's no time to be lost. I think that's true. It may already be too late. All right, we'll go back to lunch. This afternoon, we'll try that trout stream by the house and keep our eyes open. Tonight, Marshal, you and I will go back there and see if we can find anything. All right, start that motor, Marshal. Right on. Which way, Inspector? Work round to the back of the house. There's a building on the other side that I want to look at. Careful where you step. Yes. Ken, it's pretty dark. Hmm. That place beyond is the boathouse, I believe. Yes, evidently. But I want to see what's in it. All right. Here you go. Here. A... Here you are. Here. There's a path here. I see. By George, they... they seem pretty quiet at the house. Yes. What time is it, Marshal? Close on two o'clock. They must be all in bed by this time, unless there's a watchman on the job. Well, yeah, we've got a chance, that. It's funny, there isn't even a dog to give the alarm. I don't understand that. No. Here. Here's that boathouse, anyway. There's a door here that... But it's padlocked. And here... Here's a window. All right. Try the flashlight. Better keep it down low. Yes. Look. There's a big boat in there. I see. A power cruiser. It looks like a fast one. See those side exhausts? Yes. Well, that makes the thing more plausible. But there's no law against keeping a motorboat. Let's get back to the house. What? You're going to try to get in? Yes. Might as well find out all we can while we're here. Say... It'd be funny if we got pinched for burglary. Yes, wouldn't it? Shall we try one of these windows? Hold on. Wait a minute. There's a basement door here. This way, Marshal. I guess the thing's open. Better be careful, Inspector. This is too easy. Either there's nothing at all here, or a lot more than we bargain for. Well, come on. You've got to look round. Here, Marshal, what on earth? Switch that light off. Stand still, both of you, and don't uh, move. Parker, by all that's infernal. Yes, Parker's the name, Inspector Blair. I was expecting you. Better keep still. This gun might go off. All right. What are you going to do, Parker? Won't you sit down, Inspector, and your friend, too? I'd like to tell you something about my business. Your business? Well, that's what you came for, isn't it? All right. What about it? It might interest you to know that I've been checking up on this little scheme of yours very closely. When I heard that the famous Inspector Blair was on the job, naturally I had to take precautions. Really? Yes. I thought you were going to cause me a lot of trouble, but 
I'm afraid your ability is a good deal overrated. What's the point of all this, Parker? The point, Inspector, is that you fitted into our little arrangement very nicely. When I gave you that lead to this place, I never dreamed that you'd bite so hard. I see. You mean the time you took the boat up here instead of coming in by plane? Yes, I should have seen through that. Well, what are you going to do, Parker? That ought not to be hard to guess, Inspector. A lot of men in your line have tried to meddle with this business of mine. I've always tried to cooperate with them. Detectives are very fond of clues, so I give them plenty. That's my system. Get the idea? Yes. Congratulations, Parker. It's a new angle. I'll uh, bear it in mind. I'm afraid you won't have very long to think it over, Inspector. The plane is just coming in from Vancouver for our nightly shipment. Hmm. I'm going to take you, gentlemen, for a little ride. You'll see our business in operation before we part. <laughs> Very neat, Parker. Do you expect to get away with this? Well, why not? I'm particularly pleased you brought Miss Guest along. My man has gone to the hotel for her now. She's a very clever woman, and the party wouldn't be complete without Miss Guest. I must say, you don't appear to have overlooked anything. Thanks. Praise from Inspector Blair <laughs> is praise indeed. Here, Parker. What's the meaning of this? Get out of here, Richford, you blundering fool! Put that gun down, Get Parker. out, I tell you! Put that gun down! Uh, uh. Quick, Marshal. Uh, all right. Parker's got it. Got it through the head. How's the commander? He's badly hit. They were within two feet of each other when they fired. This fellow's alive. Let's get a statement. Uh, Commander, listen. Sorry. Sorry, gentlemen. It's... It's no good. Tell me, you might as well. Were you associated with this man here? Yes. Yes, I... I was... I was... In it. But I... I draw the line at... At killing policemen... He's gone, I'm afraid. Well, this is a nice mess. Wonder what that shooting is outside. I don't know, Inspector. Look out. There's somebody coming. All right, stand by. Hey, stand still there. Put your hands up. Oh, it's only me, Sergeant. <laughs> Good Lord, Miss Guest. <laughs> yes. Is anybody hurt? Yes, Parker and Commander Richford. They killed each other. Oh, dear, how terrible. What was that shooting outside just now? Well, you see, there's a seaplane just landed out there. So I took an awful chance. I blew a hole in the floater in my automatic. I'm afraid that it's sinking, Inspector. Did I do right? Huh. Miss Guest, that was very unladylike of you. You have heard episode 18 of Blair of the Mounties. The next chapter in the series is entitled Robbery at the Canada Western. <laughs> 